Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Jeremy Foster. Hello, I'm hey, Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. You uh, probably recognize Jeremy. He is a prolific uh, publisher of videos and <laughs> code chat. Uh, which is a bit of a hiatus, but it's, it'll yeah. come back, yes? Yeah, it's struggling right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm real busy, so mm. <laughs> you know I how that you. goes. I know. I took, uh, I took most of the summer off and then came back on. It's like people are, hey, where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> Got and then some people do. said, oh, thank God you're not on anymore. It was a little <laughs> bit of fun. I, was, uh, I noticed that you had done a course on MVA, Microsoft Virtual Academy, on yeah. Git in Visual Studio. Yeah, and specifically on GitHub. Mm -hmm. GitHub, and, and that is a topic that w I did a show uh, about a year ago with Paul Litton and on an overview of Git, but it's, a, it's kind of an important topic. It's, Git is the place where people put code. It is the place where people do source control. Yeah. And it's not the most intuitive thing ever invented, perhaps. Not at all. It's extremely powerful. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought maybe you could uh, do some highlights from the show, focus on the Visual Studio stuff, or for the full story, people should go watch the course. We'll have a link to that. Yeah. But can you show us uh, how to use Git and GitHub inside of Visual Studio and, and Visual Studio Code and, and kind of demystify it a little bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is the course. You can find it. I made a short link for oh, you cool. at codefoster.com okay. slash GitHub MVA. Mm -hmm. So if you want, six hours of training on GitHub specifically for Windows users go here and you can see yep. that you know we talk about the basic concepts but then then we talk about GitHub and we do the whole workflow in the browser so you can you can get a feel for what it is that GitHub offers you just mm -hmm. kind of natively out of, right. out of the box you know not cool. with any tooling or operating uh, system specific yep. stuff and then we talk about some client tooling. GitHub Desktop is like if you're a Windows user and you like your applications and you want to use Git, then you can use GitHub Desktop. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very capable client. It's a beautiful client. But then you can also use integrations in Visual right. Studio, and that's what we'll talk about yeah. today. Or you can do command line. <laughs> awesome. You know, for the longest time doing this show, I had wanted somebody to call me just because I thought it would be funny. But I, I wasn't going to stage it. Yeah. And it actually, uh, a few months ago, it happened. I yeah. thought it was hilarious. Now it's even funnier that it happened to a guest. To a guest, yeah. Oh, just a second. I need to take this. Yeah. Um, and you can also use the command line. But if I'm writing Visual Studio code, then mm -hmm. I probably am going to want to do it from inside yeah. Visual Studio or See, Visual Studio Code, of course. That's the thing. For a lot of classic Windows developers... And I assume eventually we'll add it to Xamarin Studio. Yeah. I assume. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to be everywhere. <laughs> right. The thing is, for a lot of Windows, for a lot of Microsoft developers, they're used to a graphical user interface. Right. Their, their IDE is, is heavily influenced by you know, a graphical user interface, and then they're de designing apps that, right. are, um, that are GUIs. And so it's, it's not natural for a lot of Microsoft developers to drop down to the command line and do things. And that's kind right. of changing a, a bit. Or to have the context switch where you leave Visual Studio, go to the website or a different client mm, tool, yeah. do something that you would think to yourself, well, why don't, can't I just do this inside Visual Studio? Because it's just that's calling right. an API, yeah. right? It's not like yeah. it's... And for all the real common workflows in source control using Git, it's all there in Visual Studio. Yeah. And I know people that have no desire to go to the command line at all, and yet they use Git extensively in Visual Studio because all the basic things are there. Right. Cool. Yeah. So, and really what we have, what I want to talk about is like diving into the Visual Studio specific topic. Mm -hmm. There's two Visual Studios now, really. There's Visual Studio 2015, yep. all the various editions of that, and then there's Visual Studio Code. Right. And you said that on Toolbox, you talk about both of those. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and there's Git functionality in both of those. Yep. So we'll look at both. Cool. All right. Yeah, so um, the first one is uh, Visual Studio. I call it Visual Studio proper, <laughs> like as opposed <laughs> to code, Visual Studio proper. And in Visual Studio, like say 2015 Community Edition, there's uh, all, the, all the editions really, there's an extension called the GitHub extension for Visual Studio. Okay. Now that is the one plugin that you should use because if you go to the extensions um, uh, search and mm -hmm. you search online yep. for Git or GitHub, you're yep. going to find a bunch of stuff. Right. But the flagship one, the, yes. the one that you really want, is the and GitHub. And what you'll extension. you'll notice over time is that it updates on a fairly regular basis. Yeah. So you're constantly reminded that you have it. Yeah. There you and go. It's like, oh, there's a new version. It's okay. I'll get it. I've never used <laughs> it, but I, I want to stay current. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And just so you know, there, there was an older one called Visual, Stu Visual Studio Tools Forget. Okay. That was the 20, Visual Studio 2012 and mm -hmm. earlier. And you probably won't be using that one okay. anymore. It's, it's not as robust, not as, not as capable. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into a yeah, demo on definitely. the uh, GitHub extension. So I'm going to jump over to Visual Studio. And it's the Visual Studio we all know and love. Visual Studio 2015 community is what I'm in. And if I go up to my tools... Should that be showing up uh, on the should, screen there? It should. Are yeah. you projecting? I'm, I well, have it on my screen. screen. I'm being selfish. I'm, I'm viewing it on my screen. There it is. <laughs> okay. okay. That so, way I get to see. That's right. So now I'm going to go to tools and extensions and updates. And I, I did that kind of quick. Let me just go ahead and... Extensions and updates. Now, probably you can if you did, is the flag here. Yeah, there you go. I've got an update. I've got yeah. something. I, I think the one I have to update is the Azure tools, and so it's a, it's a big one. So yeah. I didn't want to do it right before the show. <laughs> but you'll see in here there that you've is. got the yeah. GitHub extension. You probably already got it because yes. it kind of comes with the stock uh, build. But right. if you don't, then just search for GitHub in yep. there, and and you'll get it. So that. Once you have that, then you have a, quite a bit of tooling in Visual Studio that's just kind of done for you. It's kind of ready. And most of that is going to be inside the Team Explorer mm -hmm. uh, tab. So in Team Explorer, now you can get lost in here, but um, you can always go back home and you can look at what um, different providers you have and you can I clicked on the little connect thing mm -hmm. and you can see that you've got GitHub in here. Right. But let me draw in your it's your VSTS. Yeah, that's right. Yep. yep. So yeah, so you can choose and Visual right. Studio of course you can do either. And uh, I want to draw your attention to the fact that there's a GitHub section in here and there's a local Git repository yes. section in here. So it's confusing but Git is a technology. Right. And GitHub is a service online. It's a company that that uses Git right. and, and facilitates you using Git, and you know it's it's your uh, cloud right. provider. I think the two terms are kind of used together. Yeah. People, you know, when you say, "Oh, you should put that in Git," you know, GitHub, Git. Right. You know, I think people kind of think it's the same thing, but you're right. right. Git, Git is the underlying plumbing, right? And GitHub is a repository, an online repository, if you will. That's right. I'm misusing the term, but an online place yeah. where you can put code. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and really Git, like, Git is an, a, a, an offline source control. So right. I have the entire copy of the repository, and then if you're working together with me on a project, you do too, right. and so does Jane and yep. Jill and Joe. We, but then we all, we all could communicate directly with each other, but it would get difficult. Right. So it's nice to have a common place in the cloud, and that's what yep. GitHub becomes. Okay. Yeah. So right now I have two of my projects on. This isn't showing me all the stuff I have in my GitHub. I have a lot more repositories in this, but here are two of them okay. that I'm kind of working on now. And when you use these commands, just think, this is in the cloud. So if I yep. clone, I'm cloning from the cloud. That's copying a repository down from the cloud. If I create, I'm creating a repo in the cloud. Okay. Okay. So repo or repository is a basically is it a project? Is it a solution? Is it a folder? Yeah. So when you're coming from the Visual Studio world, yeah. you have to do that mapping. Right. And it's really, it's none of those or any of those. Okay. Whatever you want it to be. A repo is just a collection of files and folders. Okay. So what is a collection? Yep. It is okay. a collection. Now, some people um, will say, you know what? I've got a solution with four projects in it. That whole thing belongs in one GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. Other people will say um, they might have a GitHub repo that's even one level higher and they have a folder with all of their graphics that's not in Visual Studio maybe. Okay. You know, it's like all their, their website graphics and stuff like that. And then they have a folder called code and that's where they have all their code. So okay. you could go high, a level higher. You could also go a level lower and this is actually very common. There's some good arguments for this. You could have a different GitHub repo for each project in your solution. Okay. There's some real reasons to do that because if a GitHub repo represents a single project, yep. then it makes it easy to deploy that project to something like Azure. Okay. Okay, because that repo represents the entire mm. project. Okay. So clone, <clears throat> that pulls something down. It might make I, it easier if you're working on a solution with a whole bunch of projects and you and I are only working on a couple projects each then I might not want the entire solution brought down. I may just want to work with my, the repo, which represents the project I happen to be working on. That's true. On, right? If you have a gigantic yeah, solution, okay. 
all the more reason to break it out because otherwise anybody that clones your repo is yeah. cloning the entire solution. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've worked on some really big solutions in the past that have 125 projects in them and that you would n never want. You could put all of that in GitHub, but right. probably wouldn't want to. Okay. Okay, so the create there creates it on the web. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit create right here. And it's going to bring up this little uh, dialog box. Actually, let me jump back and say, if you don't see this yet, you see GitHub and you have a little connect button. That means you haven't signed in okay. yet. So you click connect and sign in. But now I can just create a, a repo, whatever I want. Let's call it whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And I can give it a description or I don't have to. Now this is telling Visual Studio where I want to put the local version of this. So I'm kind of doing two things. I'm can creating you control it in the that cloud. path? Absolutely. Yeah, there's uh, settings in here. Okay. And in the settings, you can tell it where your default path is. I don't remember exactly where it's at, um, but it's in here somewhere. Okay. What you want it to, for, to be for your default path, and you can also set your um, user information. What are, what's get. the best practice for that? Well, you know what I do is I put everything under code. Yeah. That way, all my paths are really short. So, it's really easy yeah. to get to. Yeah, the problem with putting things under users mm -hmm. is if you then need to repave your machine, yeah. um, then you need to remember to have copied that. Except off, for this, right? most of the stuff in my code folder is already in the cloud. Oh, it's already in up in, in the cloud as well. Okay. That's right. So I can right. wipe out that folder at any time and then yeah. just. It, it, now, it might not be the case. I might have some work in there. So when right. I pave my machine, okay. I go through my projects and I go, do I have any outstanding work on that or that okay. or that? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. But it's really nice not having it buried in there because a lot of um, my code, it, whether it's a Visual Studio project or I work a lot on Node.js projects, and mm -hmm. in either case, you get these gigantic collections of files, right? The, all your dependencies and their dependencies. Right. And I don't, I don't like syncing all that stuff up to OneDrive when it's really all just redundant stuff anyway. Yep. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put this under code. Actually, I'm going to put this under scratch just because we're playing right now. And I'll call it whatever I want. Now, here it asks me for a git ignore file and a license. And mm -hmm. those are important to do. I say you do them right away. The git ignore file here, it's defaulting to Visual Studio, which makes sense because I'm creating this in Visual Studio. What that means is that it's actually going to seed this repository with a file called .git ignore. Mm -hmm. And that file ignores, specifies some things that git should ignore. Some common things like the bin folder or the obj folder. Those are derivative folders. Packages? Does it ignore packages? Mm -hmm. uh, I think by default it does. I'm not positive, okay. but that would be a good one to depending ignore. Depending on what you're using, packages can be 50 to 75 megabytes. And Absolutely. It rebuild it, repopulates that. You know, when you build we'll the take project. a look at it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice yeah. Those to see things that. like that, like your packages folder, your dependencies folders, right. they're just derivative. You could regenerate right. them at any time, yep. so you don't need to check those into your okay. source control. Yep. Okay, and then choose a license. I like to go with the Apache, so let's choose an Apache mm -hmm. license. Now this is going into my account. Okay. When I sign up for GitHub, I have. A, a, a place to put my repositories, and it's under my personal account. Mm -hmm. But I can also create or join organizations. And organizations are like places for people to collect and put repos that are shared among them. Okay. And no one person kind of owns it. And so if you go somewhere like github.com slash Microsoft, mm -hmm. that's an organization. Right. And, and you can create your own. And as long as the repos in it are public, it's all free. Okay. So that's cool. Um, but I can choose here whether I want this to go into my personal one or any of the orgs that I'm involved in. Ah, there you can see okay. all the orgs that I'm involved in. But I'll just put this under my personal mm -hmm. and then create. Now, that, since this is creating it in the cloud, I should be able to jump out to github.com and I'll go to my account. And I'll go to my repos. And look at that. Whatever I want okay. exists. Yep. And let's click cool. on it. Should it have anything? It should. Because we specified that we want it seeded with some files. Yep. The git ignore, let's look at that. And let's see if we can find the packages folder in here. I'm guessing that it is in there. It's pretty big. There's a lot of stuff that yeah. you know that you Nugget might packages. find. packages. There, there it is. is. Okay, I got it. Saw it. Yep. Awesome. Ah. <clears throat> nice. It's nice for that to and be ignored. Then you if you wanted to include those, you could just edit that yep. file, presumably, Absolutely. and have it include the packages. That's right. And then it also gave us a readme file. This readme file is a little bit special because whatever is in it 
is what shows up on this page. So if okay. you send somebody to your GitHub repo, mm -hmm. like you're creating some sample code and you want to tell right. people, go here and look at it. Yep. Well, when they first get there, you want it to look nice. You want it to look like you're doing something exactly. with it. Exactly. It looks you like you created it once and abandoned yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, we've got no code in here right. yet, so it's sad. Wah, wah, wah. But let's jump over to Visual Studio. And let's go to the whatever I want that I just created. Now, when I created it up here on GitHub, it also created for me this local repository. Okay, two okay. very different things, but it made both for me. Let's go to the whatever I want. Now we're in a little more specific page inside of Team Explorer. Mm -hmm. And this section at the bottom is interesting. It says solutions, new or open. This is Visual Studio saying, I'm, I'm Visual Studio, so I only work with solutions and projects. Right. That's how you open code in sure. Visual Studio. So mm -hmm. I'm looking for some. There aren't any. Okay. I found three files in there. None of them was a CSPROJ or whatever. So let's say, all right, let's go ahead and create a new one. And it opens the familiar uh, file new project dialog box. So let's create a C and Sharp interestingly, console. Interestingly, create new Git repository is checked. Yeah, and I actually I don't know how that will behave. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that because you already have a repo. I have a repo. Mm -hmm. I don't want this okay. to be its own repo. Glad you pointed that out. And it is going to create a folder, and it's going to put it in that whatever I want folder by by default. And here we go. Okay, so I've got myself a nice little project. Now that SLN file now shows up here, yep. so that if anybody else pulls this project down from the web, opens it in Visual Studio and then double clicks on it, they'll see under solutions, a solution. And so it's easy to open it in Visual Studio. Now, if I go back, I'm sorry, I didn't want to go back. Let's go back forward. If I go to changes, it should show me that I've got a bunch of yep. stuff that I haven't checked in because I just created a whole project and none of that stuff is checked in. Now, by the way, I'm going to jump to this in my command line just to show you that okay. everything you do in Visual Studio is 100% in sync with whatever you do with Git anywhere else. So if I'm in Visual Studio, or if I'm on my command line here, and I go into my Scratch folder, into whatever I want, I see this whatever I want repo, and there's my stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Now here I'm local, so I see my console application that I just created. Right. If I jump out to the web, I don't see that. I haven't because put it up there yet. You've your local repo is that code just sitting on your hard drive. It's just it's, it's not in the cloud yet. That's in, right. And as a matter of fact, it's not even in my local repo. It's in my local working directory. And I haven't checked it in yet. You see this little oh, two? Yep. It's hard to see. Mm -hmm. But there's a little two there saying there's a couple of things in here. There's the git attributes and this folder that are okay. new. You haven't, mm -hmm. you haven't committed those yet. Okay. And so I could commit those on the command line, but we want to see how this works in Visual Studio. So let's go there. And we'll say, okay, all of this code, it's good. It's, right. it's simple. It's just a console yeah. application that does nothing, but it's good. This is my, like my initial commit. So I'll say initial commit, mm -hmm. and then I'll say commit all. Now what just happened is I moved that, those files from just being in my working directory to also being in the, my local repo. So I committed them. That's what a commit is. It's saying, I like my code. It's good. It's done. I'm going to I'm going to commit. Is it. that a physical thing or a virtual thing? It's a physical thing. So it you actually now have two copies of this code? Well, on your not disk? not really. Not really. Um, I well, it, it, technically now I do. Technically, well, let me show you this. I'm going to go into I'm going to do the PowerShell II which is invoke this folder. So it's going to open it in in uh, Explorer here. Mm -hmm. Now you see this hidden folder, this yep. git. If I dig into that, which I'm perfectly welcome to do, it's my computer. <laughs> I go to objects, there are all these hexadecimal codes for oh. all of these objects that exist in my repo. Mm -hmm. It's nothing you really want to look at, but all your stuff actually exists yeah. in here. So you probably don't want to delete that folder. You don't. You don't. You lose all your history if you delete that oh, folder. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's voice and experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, or so you've been told. So I've been told. It's not right. like I've ever deleted stuff. Yeah. Now. So all of this, okay. this is not just the current state of affairs in mm -hmm. this project. It's all of history as well. Got it. Okay. And Git is basically, when you say, I want to go to a certain branch, all it's doing is it's making your working directory match what it has in its Got object. It. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now I have it local. So let's go back to Visual Studio. I have that commit. If I go back and I hit sync, It'll say, okay, there's an outgoing commit. There's this mm -hmm. commit you called initial commit. Okay. 
that's here, but it's not up on the server, so it needs to be pushed up. Now, there's a Git concept called pull to take code from the server and bring it down, mm -hmm. and a Git concept called push, which is the opposite. And what's a fetch? Now, a fetch brings it down, but doesn't merge it into your current working, okay. your current branch. Okay. Okay. So, a fetch, you won't see anything happen. It'll say, okay, I just fetched it. I would say fetch is what you want to do right before you get on the airplane. Because if somebody else worked on your project, if you hit fetch, it pulls it in so you have mm -hmm. access to it, but it doesn't mess with where you are at. Okay. If you try to do a pull right before you get on the airplane and you were working on stuff, it's going to be blood all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah, so pull and push are mm -hmm. Git concepts, but Visual Studio has this concept of sync. Okay? It's really just a pull and a push. Right. But it gives you sync because it makes good sense to have this one operation that does everything. So let's go and ahead and... In this and case, it, it knows there's nothing to pull. Yeah. So it's just going to push in this case. Yeah, it's, gonna tr it's actually going to try a pull and say, oh, if you're already up to date, nothing there's okay. nothing, nothing right. new. Got so it. I could now push or sync. It doesn't really matter. I'll sync. It'll say, okay, I'm trying to pull. Nothing new. Okay, now I'm trying to push. Mm -hmm. And, and then just there's nothing back. outgoing because you're done. That's right. And if I went back and went to changes, there are no pending changes. So mm -hmm. this is what's called a clean working directory. Okay. There's nothing, nothing to see here. Move along. Now if I jump out to the web and hit refresh, now we can there see that is. my code's up yep. there. It's up there. Now let's go into there and look at the, not at the solution, but at the program.cs, which is where I'm going to write this code. And it's a blank, right? Mm -hmm. It's blank right now. So let's go make a change in Visual Studio. Here we go. Let's do a... Console right line. Hello world. There it is. Now this is gorgeous. I mean, all the, the code I just wrote, wrote here is perfect. I love it. I've tested it. It, it. it checks out. So let's go ahead and push this in. Now, if I look in my Team Explorer under changes, I see that this file mm -hmm. has been changed. And I could actually compare this with the unmodified version to see what my changes are. Which is another reason not to delete that hidden folder that because folder. It's, this is looking locally to do that. Exactly. Presumably. It's right. looking locally. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I have mine configured to use as an external tool. Okay. You could use Visual Studio as well, but mine's using an external tool, and okay. I'll cancel that. All right. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead, and this is, this is just perfect, so I'm going to say um, created hello world. And I deserve an exclamation point on that. Now, these are the changes, and I can choose to stage or unstage. This is a concept that we haven't talked about yet. You know that we have a working directory. That's the, our files and folders. And before you commit them, you stage them, because it may be that you just made three changes, mm -hmm. or changes to three files, but only one of them really pertains to the present commit. Okay. You want to commit just one of those. Okay, so yeah. I go, yeah, let's go ahead and stage that one. It says, well, first you've got to save it. That makes good sense. I'm used to Visual Studio Code where it just <laughs> saves automatically. So, okay, now that's a staged change, okay. which means that if I do a commit, that's what's going to get committed. Does that make sense? Okay, so the staged changes get committed. That's right. Got it. Okay. Anything down here doesn't mm -hmm. get committed. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and create another file in the Solution Explorer. Let's do a... Um, add a new item, and I just want a text file. Text file, there it is, text mm -hmm. file one. Now let's go to the changes, and look at this. I've got text file one, and by adding a file, I changed my project. Yep. But neither of those do I want to commit right now, because okay. this was just the creation of Hello World. Got it. So I stage that change, I add my commit message, and I go ahead and commit it. Can you promote one change at a time? Or yes, do you have you can. to do everything in there? Everything in that file? Yeah. You can. It's or everything, because the, the plus is at the change oh, level. Can you oh, just promote that? You can, yeah, whenever, whenever you right click on one of these, you can oh, you stage go. just okay. that one. Cool. Or you can promote everything. Right. Yep. And I th what I thought you were asking is also kind of interesting. If inside of this one file, I had 100 lines of code, a little block at the top that I changed, and a little block at the bottom that I changed. It may be that those are completely unrelated changes, right? Mm -hmm. And so I could just commit part of that file. Oh, really? And what it actually does is internally it kind of splits that oh, file, stages okay. the part, just the one change, and 
and then I can commit that separately. And that's a good idea because if you are looking through your team's history mm -hmm. and somebody said, I made a bunch of changes, that doesn't help you. You know, right. it's hard to read that. Mm -hmm. And so if it says, I did this, and then I did this, and then I did this, those make a lot more Got sense. It. Okay, so I staged one file and committed it. Now let's go ahead and stage the rest and make a separate commit. So I'm going to stage that. It asks me to do some save. That makes good sense. Mm -hmm. They're both staged. And for this one, I added a text file. Commit that. Okay, now locally, I have two commits. I've, right. I've not touched the server. Locally, I have two commits. And to see those, I go back and I go to sync, and it'll say outgoing, there are these okay. two commits. Yep. Okay? And this is why it makes really good sense to have very atomic commits. Only the only changes, all, all the changes in a commit should pertain to the same atomic change mm. in code. Okay? So if you're, if you're just going crazy every once in a while, uh, you know, like do one thing, like add some console logs and then go check that in and then um, enable your key in reality, and check do that in. In reality, do people do that or do they just uh, check everything good and at the end of the day? Do. Good <laughs> citizens <laughs> do, yeah. No, people don't. Let's not be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not be judgmental. In the real world, is that the way most people do it or do most people just? I think most people do atomic okay. commits. That's right. part of the culture of, okay. of Git. It probably it could be better. Sometimes people have you know a few changes from one file, but people mm -hmm. definitely don't just check all their code in at the end of Got the day. It. Okay, that doesn't happen. Okay, so two staged or two commits outgoing, ready to go. Mm -hmm. I go ahead and do a sync, and it's going to pull. Nothing to pull. It's going to push, and now those changes are out there on the web. So, so you don't have to sync them separately. Right. Okay. When you sync it up, it pushes right. all of those commits up. Cool. Now when I go to this repo, to my code, I see that I have four commits, and if I look at my commit history, there ah, they all are. I was just about to ask you, where's the history? There it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, the, I'm currently on this branch, but mm -hmm. every single point in time is recorded in Git as a commit, as a certain yep. commit, and that commit has a certain hash. And so I can jump back to the state of this application at any of these points in time. Right. Okay. Now, when you do that, you're, you're kind of drifting, you know, you're not on a branch. You couldn't make changes and check them in and expect it to play well with the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think it might even give you an, it gives you a uh, message on the console that you're uh, in a disconnect. So that's state. not a rollback. That's not a rollback. Okay. I didn't just affect things. No, right. anybody else that comes here, they'll go to master and they'll see the current version, okay. not that old version. Yep. Okay. Okay, so that's Visual Studio 2015's with GitHub extension for Visual Studio. Okay, so two questions. Sure. What's the difference between clone and download? When would I do which? All right. So th let's, let's put them in order. There's download, just give me the code. Okay. There's clone, which is pull the code. And then there's fork it and clone it. Okay. And the, those three different things you, you would use for three very different use cases. Okay. I would download if I just want the code. I'm right. never going to change it. Yeah. I don't care about any future revisions to it. Nothing. I just want the code. And so you can download it. It's actually easier. So if I'm putting a sample up there, um, you know, going to a, I'm giving a conference talk and I put my samples up there, yeah. people can clone, Yep. but they can't push back unless I explicitly right. tell them they That's can. That's right. right. When they try to push, their console or Visual Studio okay. or whoever asks them to sign in. Right. And if they don't have rights to that okay. repository on GitHub, okay. it won't let so them. So now, second question. Uh, go into Visual Studio, create the console app, and then add it to Git. How do we do that? Add so it to if it already it exists. It already exists. Okay, let's go there. Oh, and actually, let me finish the thought oh, on, yeah, on, on that. There were the three things. There's download, mm -hmm. clone, and then fork and clone. If I just want the code and I don't care about any future revisions, I just download it. It's mm -hmm. a zip file. Everybody knows how to Tell do that. Tell me the name of uh, my restaurant if I open a restaurant. Fork and clone. Fork and clone. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> now, I clone it if, and actually it's more common to clone than download because cloning is just as easy, if not easier. And what, when you clone it, you get the code, mm -hmm. but it also has a, 
a pointer back to where it came from. Mm, and so okay. you could do a get pull at any point, oh, and it'll go get the latest version. That, so that'd be the easiest if someone's going to keep making changes to yeah. it. Ah, yeah, excellent. like you have the okay. sample code, and you tell somebody yeah. about it. If they just download it, they have a static, unchanging right. copy of it. That was the code it. as of the day you pulled it, or yeah. as of the last time I put it up there. Yep. Okay. That's right. But if they, cool. if they clone it, then they could at any point in time ah, say get pull and it'll okay. be like all your new changes nice. are coming down yep. to their computer. Okay. Now the third version is if the, if it's if you're in an open source uh, workflow mm -hmm. where they're not a part of your repository, they're just somebody on the web. Um, they would fork your project, which makes a copy in their GitHub account, mm -hmm. and then they would clone theirs, and then they would make their changes, and they could request that those changes be pulled into the main project. Okay. That's the common open source mm -hmm. workflow. Got it. Okay. But that's probably for another uh, video. Okay, so you wanted to say I've already got a, a solution. Yeah. And I want to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and file close solution. I'm going to create a new project. Let's stick with the open source, or I'm sorry, stick with the console application. Yep. And I'll go into Scratch and I'll just put it in here. This is Console application two, and I'm not going to choose to put right. this. In, that, that's another way, but we won't talk about that right now. Um, no, so this, I, is, this is code that already mm -hmm. exists. Somebody's watching this show, going, "Oh, I want to get on that train." That's right. But I have an existing project. Yep, that's a really good idea to go through that. Okay, it's pausing for me here, and while it does, let's jump down to the command line. So I've got. Console application two mm -hmm. here. There's nothing in it. Well, there is so far. There's a project file folder. All right. So I've got that created. Let's say this is console application two. I've just to have a little bit of code there. But this is not a Git repository, as right. evidenced by the fact that if I open this in Windows Explorer, it says, well, I've got this hidden VS folder, but I don't have a hidden .git right. folder. So I know that that is not a Git repository. Yep. Now, creating it as a Git repository from the command line, watch this. Git init. Okay, now it is. And if I jump over here, I can see that it created that for me. That created it locally. Created yep. it. It, uh, it, cre it turned this local file, this local folder into a into Git repository. A, right. Now, to turn that off, you, you, it's as simple as deleting that folder. Mm, okay. Okay. So, turning something into a Git repo is just doing a Git init. Mm -hmm. And turning it off is basically just deleting that Got file. It. Okay, but let's say we want to do that from inside of Visual Studio. Now, this only mm -hmm. exists locally, so let's go to my connecting page here, and it'll show all my uh, local Git repositories. Now, there is an option in here. You mentioned, uh, can you change the settings? And it would be really cool if I could find that. Here it is. Drop that down and choose Settings. And in here, I get to change my global Git settings, my ah, name, okay. email yep. address. And I'm just going to say, you know what? I normally put my stuff under code. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of other options. This is actually a really good one to choose. Enable the download of author images from third party. That way, when you're collaborating with people, you get to see their avatar ah, okay. in there. So I'll go ahead and update that. And this is where I've got my diff mer and merge tools configured to use oh. beyond compare. But okay. That's for another day as well. Okay, so let's jump back here. And now, right now, I don't see that as a local repo just because I haven't brought it in here. If it, if it scanned your whole hard drive and brought in every Git repo, it'd probably be too right. busy. So it waits for you to add them. Not create a new one, but to add an existing one. So I'm going to add. It's looking in code, but I'm going to say, no, I'm actually interested in, oh, and you know what? I think I've, I've got backwards on this because if I go, Console application two. If I look inside there, that's not going to be a Git repo yet. So I think I do want to create a new one. New, and let's go ahead and browse for it. Let's browse for Scratch, Console app two, Console app two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Create that. Now, it already exists and it's not empty. Okay, so I'm confused here. Let me try. Let me try. It might be add. I don't normally do this. Let me we'll go into Scratch again. Console app 2. Console app 2. Okay. Add. All right. So that was the workflow. Ignore okay. my first thing. All right. 
So if you have a folder that already exists, it's already a project, then you, you want to create a new GitHub repo mm -hmm. out of an existing folder. You do that, and now it should be here, right? Expect it to be in here. Let's go look in here, and it did not actually do it. So, Robert, I'm all confused. I'm uh -huh. all washed up. Let's try it one more time. Let's say new, and we'll browse. We'll go to C, scratch, console app 2, that folder. Yes, and create. Already exists and is not empty. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, okay so it won't let you do that. That's really interesting. There's that... probably a way to do it, and I just don't know it. What, what this is asking you to do is to create, like we've already got console app 2. If I wanted to create a repository, foo, it's mm -hmm. going to do that for me. Okay. And now I've got foo and that's where it exists. If I wanted to add an existing repository, like, like let's say I didn't have foo in here, can I, I can remove that. If I don't have foo in there, then I can browse to foo, which is already a git repo, and I can add it and that works. Okay. But what I can't do is take a folder that I already have that exists as a git repo and reference it in, that, that's not yet a git repo and turn it into a git repo. So then what you need to do is create the empty folder with the repo and copy the files over? Which would probably be a good idea anyway, you know, to go to that folder's parent and create a git repo there and then drag that fo folder into it. Right. Or could you then take the project and add it to source control and specify git and that will do that for let's you? Let's give that a try. So let's take this folder that we already have and right click on the solution. Add to source control. Add it to source control and let's see if this works. It wants me to save it. Good idea. It's all saved and I don't see that that did anything. It did do it. Look at that. Ah, okay. And it may have done that earlier on your machine, but right. you didn't recognize it. Okay, so, so, so that's, that's the, way the way easiest to way to do it. There you go. If it's not already under source control, add it, creates the local Git repository, and now you can sync. Well, this wait. Oh, wait. You still got to create the. You still got to create it there, or will it create it for you? You're exactly right. It's not in GitHub yet, so um, I think that I'll still be able to um, go to. Sync for that. Um, not sync. I want to go to. I want to go to that one. Okay, there we go. Now notice that there are fewer options here because yep. it doesn't exist yet in GitHub. Okay. Sync in this case is going to publish it. That's going to put it into GitHub. All right. And publish to GitHub. Oh, there we go. There it is. Publish the Git repo. Enter the URL. Oh, of an empty Git repo, that isn't creating it for you. Okay, so you still got to go to the website or the command line, create the repo, and then you can publish to it. Yeah, All and right. you that's, can create the repo fine. here. Um, remember that oh, up yeah. here you, you can, can create, create it right repos. There. Yeah, so you can say, let's create okay, console sure. application 2. It's just not going to prompt you for that. So let's do that. Visual Studio, pick a license, go for it. Now that exists. Mm -hmm. And so now if I double click on console application 2, and hit sync. sync, it takes me here and I publish it, and it says, what is the URL? The URLs um, are easy. At first you're like, I've got to go copy it, but it's actually just github.com, oh, I've got to spell it right, code foster, and that one was called console application 2. Mm -hmm. Publish it. Invalid URL. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not our day. Oh, look, I had one slash. Somebody on camera should have caught that and, I don't know, <laughs> tweeted it. Ah. Ooh. Oh, I've already, got, I've already got one. You already got one. Okay. Oh, well. Anyway, At any rate, this something is how like you do that. it. Okay. All right. Yeah, probably I wouldn't suggest just taking your existing project and trying to do it just like that. You might want to start over with a repo and move your folder into it, hmm. get it you know, situated the way you want, okay. structured the way you want, and then go ahead okay. and add those changes and check right. them in. Okay, cool. 
Now, Visual Studio Code is the other way you can do it. Yep. You know, you Visual Studio Code you tend to use when you're working on kind of different types of uh, projects. Or when um, you just want to see the contents of a .cs file. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's what I do. It's now my default I used to editor. Use, yeah, I used to use uh, Notepad for yeah. that, but now I just I use VS Code. That's right. Now, if I go to, let's go back up to my Which Scratch folder. This is also my, my uh, surreptitious way of always making sure VS Code's updated, because if I look at a CS file, VS Code launches, and then it tells me there's a new update. <laughs> I go, oh, all right, update. You want to make sure you stay yeah, current, even exactly. if you're not using it. <laughs> let's go ahead and create a, I don't think I have a foo2, so let's make directory foo2. And we're going to do this, it does already exist. Let's make directory foo20, I bet that doesn't exist. We're going to do this a little bit backwards. When you're using code, Visual Studio Code, you do tend to use the command line more. Yes. Okay? It doesn't try to replace all the command line. It tries to complement the command line. Mm -hmm. And people that use code or other applications like code tend to be the more of the command line type the people. The folks that like, that like the lightweight editor, not the big fat IDEs. That's right. Like me. So let's I'm say a I'm going to fat IDE guy. Fat IDE I'm just guy. Gonna say it right yeah. up front. It is Man. a it's a good I like IDE. Big fat IDEs with wizards <laughs> and I like all the help I can get. About a thousand buttons on the screen in any given <laughs> yes, time. Yes, absolutely. That's right. Yep. Okay, so let's follow kind of a traditional workflow for creating something. If you're doing it in code, let's say I'm going to make a Node app. I'm going to make a, a folder which I just did mm -hmm. foo twenty and then go into it. Now, do you remember how I initialized that as a Git repository? Do I? Git init. Git init. Yep. Yes. And all that did was create a dot git. Right. Okay. Now, if I want to open this folder, or let, actually first, let's say I wanted to create an HTML file. Okay. I could do touch index.html, and that will create that touch file. Touch is a PowerShell command? It's actually a Linux command. It's a Linux command. It's, uh, it's, it's popular. I think there's actually an alias for it in PowerShell, if I'm not okay. mistaken. But I create a um, path to my git bin folder, which gives me a whole bunch of the popular Linux commands. Okay. So then when somebody from the Linux world says, try this, and you type it, it actually works. You've okay. actually got that command. Got it. So I, I create a file, and now I'm going to open that in code by simply typing code this folder. And code doesn't look for a project file or right. a solution file. It just it's looks just for folder a folder. Yeah. Yep. And there's my index.html. Now let's go ahead and say um, I want some HTML here, so I'm going to use. Uh, have you seen the Emmet autocomplete? No. For HTML, this exists in Visual Studio as well as Visual Studio okay. Code. You can type any HTML for the most part. Like I want a div, so you just type div tab, and you've got cool. your div mm -hmm. open and close. You can also say I want a div that contains an un unordered list that contains five li's. Ooh. And I want those to all have some lorem ipsum text. <laughs> and it creates all nice. that for you. It's extremely handy. And so I, whenever I'm creating an HTML file, mm -hmm. HTML colon 5 is a good way to get the basic HTML okay. template. So let's say um, in here, let's just have a line that's just A. Okay? We'll just say A and put a break after mm -hmm. it. That's, that's it. Now let's go ahead and check this in. Same thing we just did in Visual Studio 2015, right. but now in code. Where's the Team Explorer? Yeah, where is Team Explorer? <laughs> well, it's not in here. You don't get that with no. code. In code, get functionality is built right in. Right. It's just expecting that. And you come over here to the left and you just click on Git, and this is where it is. There's and your it changes. It tells you you have one yep. change, right? Yep. And uh, so I can say, okay, let's go ahead and stage that change, mm -hmm. and then let's write a commit Git message here that's just A, because that's all I added was an A. And then I hit go, and it commits that. Okay. And now, if I look down here on the bottom, see it says I'm on the master branch. Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't exist in GitHub yet. I haven't created this in GitHub. This is just local. Okay. Okay. I could go ahead and make more changes, commit them, and I have all these changes local. Um, it is a Git repo, but it's not a Git repo in the cloud at all. Okay. And if I look down here, I see master, but there's normally an icon next to it that represents your connection to the cloud, and it's not there because I'm not connected to the cloud yet. In Git terms, what that means is that if I say git remote, show me all my remotes, actually, git, yeah, git remote, v says, says verbose, show me all my remotes, it says you don't have any remotes. Okay. In other words, you're not connected to, you're not referencing a certain place in the cloud. Okay. Okay. Now, here, just like in Visual Studio, we went to the GitHub section and said create a new one in GitHub. Yep. Here, we, we would do this on the command line. 
So what you would do is you would npm install, you can type it out or you can just do an i, a global tool, so mm -hmm. dash g, and it's called gh. So there's a tool out there in the community in the npm repository called github gh, and that is a really good command line tool for accessing GitHub. Okay. So it's different from Git. So you Git, do that outside of code? Outside of code. I'm on the okay. command line. Outside of code. All right. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if you use code or notepad or, or um, no, notepad++. But you plus can or, do that from inside code? You, inside no? code, you can open your command line, okay. but you're still doing it on the command line. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I'm, cr I'm installing GH, I already have that, so I'm going to back that out, and I'm going to say GitHub repo, and then tell me what I can do with the repo command. And the GH command is going to say, well, here's all the cool things you can do with GitHub repos. You can, scroll up a little bit, you can browse them, clone them, delete them, get details, fork them, list them, you can create a new one. Let's do that. Let's say GH repo dash dash new and we'll call this foo20, because that's what we called okay. it locally. And now that is going to, on GitHub, it's using GitHub's API, on GitHub it's going to create the foo20 repo, and then it's going to open my browser and show me that, hey, foo20 mm. repo actually exists. Okay. I, I wish it didn't open the browser. I don't actually need that. I want to stay on the command line. But that exists now. And now if I say git remote and show me my remotes, it's still not connected. Right. So now I would need to manually tie that up. And so I could say git um, remote add, one called origin. That's mm -hmm. what by default people call their main remote. And I want that to be a pointer to, I can, I can go out and copy this. That'll be a little bit faster. I'll go ahead and get the clone URL and paste that in here. And now if I jump over to Visual Studio Code, it's going to say in just a second, ah, I see that I have a connection to the cloud now. Mm -hmm. Although the branch that you're on called master, is not yet published. So that's like a pub. Notice that that icon looks like an arrow going to the yeah. cloud. Okay. That's the publish arrow. So let's go ahead and publish. Boom. Okay. So are you sure you want to okay. publish master to the origin remote? And there we go. It's going up. Uh oh, there was an error. Anytime Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code is really just calling git commands on your yeah. behalf. So you can show the output command down here and it'll show you uh, what, what happened that was, that was bad. Let's look at this. Oh, was I was in the wrong. In... I was in the wrong one. Yeah, I was in what okay. I, whatever I want. Let's go to foo twenty. This is the command that I want. Now you'll get to see the inner workings here. Instead of get remote add, I'm going to do get remote set URL of origin to this. Changed that. Now let's try this again. We'll jump back to Visual Studio. Try to run that. And it worked. So now yeah, cool. the icon right. is now a little double arrow thing. Mm -hmm. Like we're connected to this yep. branch in the cloud, and you can just sync it anytime you want. So uh, Visual Studio Code has it feels a bit more native. So you haven't have you pushed? Um, I did. Whenever I put okay. publish, that actually okay. pushed right. it okay. to the cloud. Yeah, got it, got publish it. is a, one of those Visual Studio terms. It's really just right. Okay, um, pushing it. Yep. Okay, so now if I look in the code for foo20, I see that I have index.html. I can look at it and see that A. Now let's yeah. go ahead and go through a, a simple workflow here. Let's create a B. Okay, so I've got A and B. Now I look at, I see this little one appear saying you've changed a file. I look at that file and I click on it and it shows me the code comparison right oh, next cool. to it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's do something kind of fun here. On that file, let's also add C and D. But let's say that the change, the changes are unrelated. I really only want to check in this one right here. Right. So I can highlight that line, and in Visual Studio Code, I can say, I just want to stage that mm -hmm. one line. And check yes. this out. Now, over here, I've got yeah. a, oops, in my Git, I've got a staged change, which is just the C, and I've got a pending change, which is the mm. B and the D. Mm -hmm. So now I can say C, I added C, commit that, and now let's go ahead and stage this one, B and D. And I can stage those ones. Now those are atomic changes, and I can, I can um, publish all of that by 
clicking here and saying sync or by clicking down here. Notice that it gives me this little indicator that says you have okay. two ready to go yeah. up and none ready to come down. Okay, so those cool. are all in the cloud now. Yeah. So that's kind of the built-in functionality yeah. in code, but there's also some extensions. I don't know if you want to see those. Yeah. Okay. So extensions in, in VS Code are really fun to create, and it's, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of them that pertain to Get. So if you just go into here and search for Get, you're going to find a ton. But I wrote down a few of them. They are annotator is one. Uh, Git history. I'm not going to show all of these. Share code. I'm going to show you Git history first of all. I rely on that one, and I already have it installed. So if I'm on this file here, let me mm -hmm. go ahead and get out of the comparison view and drop down to just the file view. If I'm in this file and I'm wondering, okay, so this is what it looks like now, but what did it used to look like? Right. I can jump up to my command palette and say Git history, and first of all, I can show the history overall of, of my, it, this basically just shows me all my commits. Mm -hmm. But I can also say git history, and I just want the history of this one file. Yeah. And there yeah. it shows me all my commits. And for any, ones of, any one of those, I can say, um, for the B and D, I want to compare that against its previous version. Or I can compare it against what I'm looking okay. at. So let's compare it against its previous version, and it says, ah, here, this was that change. Nice. You added a B and a D. Yeah, very nice. You can do that for anywhere you want in all of history. Now, you were talking about sharing sample code mm -hmm. at events. If you want to share an entire project, just create a Git repo. But if you just want to share a snippet, right. you just want to tell people, here's how you make that call. And it's just one line. You don't want to create a repo for that. You just want to share that code. Well, you, in that case, you would create a gist. Gist. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a GitHub thing. GitHub has gists. And so you could go over to GitHub, gist.github.com and create it. But there's also a plugin. So if you're wanting to share this code with somebody, mm -hmm. you can go to share code. And I don't have the extension installed right now. Share code. Let's install it. Now, whenever you install an extension, Visual Studio Code makes you reload the window in order for that extension to be recognized. So after the installation... The Studio does the same thing. So oh, yeah? Yeah, usually. Uh, that's right. Oh, yeah. It makes yeah. you restart the program. Yeah, here it just restarts this instance of mm -hmm. Visual Studio Code. And so you have to hit Enable, and what that does is restarts it. Okay. Now I can highlight this, and almost everything that you install you find in the command palette. Mm -hmm. So this gives me Share Code. So I can Share Code, Share It. And it says, how do you want to share it? You can use Pastebin or you can use uh, GitHub Gist. Mm -hmm. GitHub Gist Anonymous means it doesn't even require you to sign in, so let's do that for now. And I want it to be public. So enter to confirm your input. This is the description. This is A, B, C, and D. I know. Cool, right? Okay, and now it jumps us out to the browser to this anonymous URL that you can give to anybody and yeah. they get to see that little snippet of code. Cool. Okay. Nice. Yep. There are more extensions, but um, I don't know if that's the... Uh, let, me, let me just mention them. Opening GitHub is a quick way to just j jump to the GitHub page so mm -hmm. that maybe you want to copy the URL or something. Um, partial diff, uh, git, ign git ignore is a nice one for generating those git ignore files. Okay. You can say, I want to start on a Ruby project. I need a git ignore file for that, or a Visual Studio project, or whatever. Right. Cool. Awesome. There's a lot of information yeah, in there. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was great. I think that, that gave us a great overview of many of the things you can do. Um, to get the full picture, people should go to your MVA course. Yeah, codefoster.com slash. You can just go to mva.microsoft.com. Yep. We'll but put you the can link up to, there. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks so much. Absolutely. All right. Hope you enjoyed that and learned a lot. I know I did. <laughs> and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.